Yeah, you know, I mean overseas. Yeah, I mean, well, you know. Five weeks. Jess and Harris. You know Jess Harris. Jess Harris from, from uh, 20 something. 20 something. Yeah. I think she did it in her show. She maintains that when you come back from overseas, that for about week, 10 days, you're a bit of a rock star. Oh, yeah, you think you're pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> well, kids at school experience that. My son's giving me a talk today on his Lego experience. Yeah. He's in grade four. Because you you went to Lego, did you? we went to we actually went to Denmark, but then we went we caught the train to Berlin, which is the home of Lego. We got their headquarters in Legoland, and that's like getting the train to Lee and Gather or something. It's three hours, but that would be worth it. Surely. Oh, because through this podcast, uh, Jamie, who listens, what he's from this Adelaide, podcast? yeah, through this podcast, he's from Adelaide. He moved with his family and became a Lego designer. And, and hang, lived on, there. hang on, hang on, he just didn't ring up randomly and say no, he tweeted me and said because oh, we talked about it. How I was you going, going to Denmark. overseas? Yeah. Oh, you've got to give him a, a big cheerio. Oh, Maybe okay. he should come in as a guest one day. Well, yeah, he's fascinating because he he was working in computers in his 30s, had a young family and just went, no, nah, I want to be a Lego designer. <laughs> <laughs> went back to uni, did an industrial design course part-time, which is pretty full on to do that kind of course. Then got an internship at Lego and then got a job there and moved there with his wife and kids and now she works there too. But Sorry, hasn't Lego already been designed? No, the constant designs, Glenn. There's like the new Star Wars kit. There's a new Harry Potter Lego. So you have to de- design. Ooh. He designs like their swords and stuff. Oh, that's that's that. And so he gave the kids all the kid. stuff that he, some of the stuff he'd worked on. Like what he, your kids? Yeah, uh, he met us at the bus stop with a bag of free Lego. That is, <laughs> that's a, a moment in the, your kids' life. They'll never forget. They'll never forget it, and it's good for a teenager who loves Lego. So. A bag of Lego. Was it all broken up? Was it in, no in packets, in, in packets, and and he, and he also had stuff like that he'd worked on. So, for example, he made Captain America's shield in the minifigure of the Lego. So that's pretty exciting. Very exciting. And then he just we sat down. We had lunch at the Lego restaurant. <laughs> it's a Lego restaurant where you've got to make a Lego <laughs> thing to order and then push it in this machine, and then it, then it gets delivered in a big Lego box. Yeah. Hang on a sec. <laughs> just, tell me, what? So what happens? Okay. You get each get given a packet of Lego, right. and each piece represents one represents chicken, one represents <sighs> chips, and you've got to make a little stick it on a Lego board, put it in this machine, and then it works out what you want. And oh then God, way too much time in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it comes down, and this robot hands it to you. It's hilarious. <laughs> God, that's incredible. Anyway, I'm, all I'm saying to you is, Glenn, is follow your dreams, mate. I don't know what you're doing with I your life. I was never a Lego guy. No, but we weren't the Lego generation. Were we? No, we were Meccano. Oh, yeah, that was like bits of metal with, with yeah. holes in it. Yes. And screws. And bolts. And Yeah. I don't you know, remember Lego being big in my house. Do you remember being big in your house? No, no I, these days. I just remember going around and staying at someone who had Lego and then occasionally you walk through with bare feet and if you stand yeah. on a Lego in the middle of the night, it really hurts. Painful. Surely Painful. they should be. They make should make a foot friendly version of Lego. Someone made a shoe with Lego bits on it, so you step on it and it picks it up, kind of thing. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, it's a massive industry. Lego. It's incredible. It's one of those things that you would think. Two thousand nineteen. People have got all sorts of stuff on their iPad. Why would you bother going? Yeah, it survived. You know why? They tie in with movies and stuff, so they do a lot of Star Wars, a lot of Harry Potter. I went round to someone's place the other day. His, her daughter was in year 10. And we played games. I think we've talked about this before. I tell you what, it's the new frontier. Yeah. If you want to make big money, come up with a game that that generation, what did it, what did it 15-year-olds want to play? Because they are all they were playing Hugh Cards of Humanity about two years yeah, ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. Huge. Yeah, yeah, huge. huge. Yeah, it did all the work yeah. for you. Look, I'll be honest, it wasn't really funny. Because it tried to it's be... It's kind of serious, isn't it? I've never played it. No, it just gives you... A, it's, you know what it is? Blankety blanks. You can't beat you, know. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> You're an old you know. Can't beat Canasta. Pick up six. Pick up six. Can't beat, pick up six was great. You're right. If you, if you come up with a new card game, you'd be laughing. I've been playing with one. I might try it out on you oh, when we really? go for burgers. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's a bit too deep, though. It's not 21. They've done that. Oh, it, no. <laughs> oh, here comes the music. It's called oh. Pontoon. Here we go. Hello and welcome to Somehow Related and now please welcome your hosts Glenn Robbins and Dave O'Neill. Good to have you back. Oh yeah, thank you. It's great. I'm jet lagged. You're not jet- no, you, you know when, you, when you're a little bit jet lagged, mm. you know what's good about that? You don't try too hard. Oh, by the way, mm. I don't have Instagram, but I have 
I, oh. my brother set up Instagram via my mother. Mm. So I can go into Instagram and look. And have a look. Yeah, same here, I think. And then... My uh, kids look at it. Anyway, I, I went on yours, two things, big, this is big. Mm. One, you've put out a book, which you've given me, yeah, called Parenthood, which by the look of it is fantastic. Well, it's like one of those books you get at the petrol station. Don't downplay it. It's like it's a, a novelty book. No, it's it's a, it, it's the touch of Dave O'Neill yeah. on the page. It, look, I was approached by the Libraries of Australia, and they put out books where they use all their old photos, and so they wanted me to do one on childhood. I went, yeah, sure. So I'd we, love to do a book like that. Well, they'd probably they'd love you to do one. If they're listening, um, because I love rewording rewording old oh, really? photos. Oh, oh I love, love it. They yeah. love it. Yeah, I don't know. I find a reason. Um, so that, you, some of them was hard to come up with captions, funny captions for. I got Brad Oaks to help me. You know, Brad the comedian. So did he, did he get a little credit on that? Oh, no, did he? he Should have. <laughs> <Should look. you? laughs> He's getting the credit now on this podcast. <laughs> um, and yeah. also on your Instagram, which I don't even, I got nothing. Is it well, my anyway, on your Instagram, you were doing a gig, yeah. a corporate. And everyone, they were like, it was it was blue collar. It looked, and they're all up dancing next to their tables. What was oh that? yeah, yeah. What yeah, happened? Julux. Yeah, <laughs> you're painting a picture already. <laughs> so, so they were dancing self consciously, awkwardly. Yeah, 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 yeah. What yeah. was that all about? Was that some sort of getting to know you sort of? Yeah, no, you, you know, know you icebreaker know, thing. I'm sure people listening would have been to these things where I sometimes host conferences where I'm just the MC, but yeah. I. Did their dinner the night before where I do stand up and yeah. they are great. They're all they're all painters. Right? Yeah. They're accredited Julux painters though, which means they're the top grade painters going. Are you gone? They're A grade. These yeah. these are painters, not paint sellers. Oh, they're a mixture. So they're painters and the guys that sell them the paint. So they're the, the Julux guys who sell them the paint, then they're mm. actual painters who own companies. Because I want to meet the guy that names the paint, the colours. Yeah, I know. I should have asked about that. You know, Crimson Moon, you know. Oh, we, we've got Lickety Split in our house. <laughs> Lickety Split? Lickety Split's a pink. It doesn't yeah. sound cool when you're speaking to a builder. No. I think we might meet a bit more Lickety Split up uh, the back hallway. Yeah. And so anyway, they had they had three keynote speakers, right, on this day, where who were people that just get up, and then one woman talked about, who was very good, talked about customer service. Mm. And you get a little bit out of it. She was interesting. He, hey, here's a fact. Do you, do you want a fact? Yeah, we, we, we are rambling. She asked the person. She this is, does this in her talk. She said, "How many?" She asked the guy on the service station, "How many people take up your offer of the Kit Kat for two dollars? How many people?" And he said, "Oh, I've worked it out." He goes, "I own this service station. I've got the I've got the facts for you. Mm-hmm. How many do you reckon out of ten say yes to the two dollar Kit Kat? One, six point two. So that's why they ask because it works. Well, that's a big. Big jump. That's what he said. He goes, it makes me eighty grand a year when what? I get my staff to ask for the for the two dollar Kit Kat. It makes me eighty grand a year. Though you, you do think your psychology changes if the Kit Kat's sitting there and you go, "There's a Kit Kat." Someone says, "Would you like it?" Is it the deal that you're looking for? Cheapness? I don't. Know. I think it's the cheapness. I, I, I two know for one. Two you for go, one. How can you go past two for one? Yeah. I always say that great joke that I said. This is what I said that the, when she did that. I came back on afterwards. I said, "This is what you got to do." When the guy on the server goes, "Cherry ripe two for three dollars," you go, "How much for one?" And the guy goes, "Oh, um, two dollars twenty. Well, I'll have the other one. <laughs> hey, oh, that's good. <laughs> that's a good joke. That's an old joke. Anyway, anyway, and then and they had another speaker who was a sports oh, woman, yeah, right. and she yep. was really good. Yep. And she talked about health. You would have loved it. She talked about health. Yeah, because I'm very healthy. Yeah, she, she's very bit. good. You mm. should do one of these motivational talks. Where you come on and everyone cheers, I think, oh, this is going to be funny. You go, I'm not here for the funny stuff. Yeah. I'm talking about health, guys. Well, I've already d- I did that on a couple of podcasts lately. Got a bit serious. Yeah. I anyway. heard it. Don't worry. Yeah. You're on the Fitbit. We should Fitbit, talk about that. And I was also yeah. on, I think I was new one, the Cheap Seats. Oh, yeah. That's um, both very good. Dave Thornton and um, Dave Thornton and Bob Murphy. Bob Murphy from yeah. Bulldogs. That's great talent. I didn't know he was so talented. Oh, yeah. Murphy. He's a Renaissance. They play man. football and then they walk up to the microphone and bang out of the park. I that's annoying. I know, I know. Yeah. I don't know, but he's very good. Very and good. then anyway, the last speaker was some young guy yep. who who was like a disruptor, and he kept saying, and it went viral. And then I went on a train, and I started a singing competition. And then anyway, he was, you know, and then he goes at the end, let's have a dance party. <laughs> so that's what it was. Well, they were pretty good. They all yeah. got up and danced, because yeah. normally you get about one or two, and it gets really embar- – but I reckon 80% of them were up. Yeah. Albeit they were doing, as you call it, they were doing their fallback move. Which is the, the st- your standard dance that you do when you don't really want to dance? Yeah. They're all doing their fallback move, but um, so that's what it was. Anyway, oh look, we should get the topics. <laughs> Sorry, that's but but you've been away, so there's a lot to catch away, up. And, you know, you've been right, overseas for five right. five weeks, and you're slightly better than everybody else. Okay, yeah. uh, well, uh, Sam's been away too. 
She has. Sam, Sam, where did you go? Noosa holiday. Oh, so, so bikini or one piece? That's, hey, 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 whoa, hey, whoa. whoa. Did you go to the National Park and see... Uh, oh, that's news, yeah. isn't it? Yes. Let's see, you've gone straight for that. Yes, uh, if you go out to Alexander Bay, it is nudist. Mm. And I, as I've said before, we went out there, we were having a nude swim, my partner and I, and a bloke walked up with a completely nude, except for a backpack. <laughs> yeah, eating an apple? Eating an apple. Eating an apple, <laughs> Two things you don't want to do in the nude. Don't eat an apple in the nude. Don't wear a backpack in the nude. And then don't stand near our clothes and look at us. While we were swimming, he stood at our clothes and looked at our clothes. I'm going, he was, oh, it was yeah, he's going to be trouble. weird. Bit well. weird. <laughs> Nudist beaches do attract weird people. I know there's naturists, or what they're called, that want to do it. There was a bloke at the end. I went with Selena, and you go up the path, and he, <laughs> you sit right at the entrance of the path. So when you walk past him... Legs at Kimbo. It was like, it was like, it was like, <laughs> you love it. You're going, mate, we get it. Yeah. You know, don't be, you know, go and do it in the, in the talking of getting rid of that, New Beach, because it's been too much problem. Oh, I read that no, somewhere. In, uh, in Noosa. I think it was Noosa. Or maybe there's one in Mornington Peninsula that I'm thinking of. I don't know. Anyway. anyway. Um, have so we got the topics yet? Okay, let's get them. Fukushima and sunflowers. Well, wow, Fukushima, you. Um, Fukushima, Fukushima was, uh, the top of Japan. Top, top of Japan. Tsunami. Earthquake and tsunami. And then oh, is that why do you reckon we're talking about Fukushima? We're not just called, we're talking about it because it's a town. No, that's... It would have to be the event. It's like when you say Hiroshima. You're not talking about the market. Yeah. Or yeah. You're talking about the, what happened there. Yeah. Isn't it funny that some towns have that? Yeah, I know. It's say, yeah, it's like saying... Is it like say one word and... Well, Hiroshima. You know, um, can't um, think of any other examples. <laughs> Ballarat. <laughs> Oh, yeah, well, wait, wait. hang on. <laughs> hang on. What do you hang think on. of that? Well, you think of, uh, you think of the... Oh, Snowtown. Oh, yeah, that's They're normally bad things, aren't they? Yeah. They're normally bad things, aren't Snowtown's they? Snowtown's a good one. Mm. Or oh, a bad one. Bad one. Okay, oh, oh well, uh, uh, um, Belongalow State Forest. Is that, mm. is that where it happened? Where Ivan Malat? Yeah, oh. I'm just worried that you don't know those quite readily. I know, yeah, I know you all got, the... You've got, you got wearing a jacket today a lot like a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> don't you reckon? Is it? Yeah. I shouldn't say that, but you know, it's probably, you probably bought well, it in like Paris or something. You like a bit of true crime stuff, but it's very disturbing. You listen to some of it, you're like, oh, this is, I've got to turn this off. This yeah, no. Awful. I don't like the true crime. Oh, we've got to get on topic, but there's a lot of true crime on the... Um, Podcast. On podcast. Yeah. The mistake they make for me is often they go, and we commit you to 25 years jail. You go, we just gave away the ending. Yeah. Why are we going to listen? We know that he, he got him. Anyway, Fukushima, let's assume. It's talking about the event that happened there. So it was an earthquake, so earthquake. a earthquake. tsunami, and then a nuclear meltdown, wasn't it? Yeah, big wave came. Big mm. wave comes into into nuclear power station. Oh. Shuts down th- one. No, no, floods it. Mm. Which means that it's been exposed, so it over. No, hang on. Yeah, something yeah. happened. And then there's what? What is it? There's nuke, nuke, when it when it reacts, then you get something coming into the. You get nuclear. Come on, we've all I'm seen. Not, I'm on Homer Simpson. I don't know. <laughs> Imagine being the Homer Simpson in that joint. Oh my god, what's happening? Is that a big flood coming? Yeah, there it were was four. Awful. There were four. Four went down apparently. Four reactors. Four reactors. Yeah. Oh gosh. Because they cool. This is a problem with nuclear power in Europe, where I've just been. You drive along in France, there's heaps of nuclear power stations and in England too. Isn't Australia, hasn't got, Australia got a lot of uranium? No, we've, we don't have any nuclear power. We've got some no. nuclear stuff for medicine. But, we but haven't have we got plenty of uranium? Oh, stacks. So it's a, it'd be a walk-up start for us. It would be an absolute walk-up start. But then you've got to worry about things. This, nuclear power is great until something like this happens. And then you go, whoops-a-daisy. Because it's actually quite clean power to make. You know, it's, it's, mm, it's not yeah. like coal. Yeah. But then look at this. What happened? It was awful. So I mean, I, I can't. I just remember seeing photos of it and reading about it and hearing about it. They just sounded terrible. So how f- does it destroy? What is? I think it's like a thirty k exclusion zone or something. Yeah, what have they you- been back in? I read this great article. I can't remember mm. where I read it about a guy, an American guy, who was working on the plant, and just about how he was. Um, he worked there for several years, and he got to know everyone. He went to his local cafe and restaurants, and he said he just can't go. You can't physically go back now, though. No, it's you all can't contaminate. But he, he flew over in a helicopter and it had all been washed away. And, oh God. Radiation. That's Radiation. the word. Radiation. That's what happens. Mm. And if you, I've only seen the first episode of Chernobyl, but ra- they had radiation burn. Have you seen it? No, I've got to, everyone talks about it. Everyone talk, it's yeah, it, I don't pretty know bleak. Really, yeah, pretty bleak. But everything else, it is what it is. Mm. It's very good. But they all get radiation burning. Hey, oh. just while we're on that, I thought I had some sort of so – 
You I, thought you had radiation burning. Well, okay, I'm going. I'm catastrophized. You stood close to the heater. I came home, I had my vitamins, uh, and then I started to go really red in the face. Oh wow! Broke out in a big rash on my on my neck. Oh wow! Got really hot, tingly, and tingly. Got a little bit dizzy. Thought big okay, mini stroke. I thought mini stroke. Yeah. Yeah. And then this is where Google comes in handy. I just read. I thought, hang on, yeah. that happened just after I had my um, my vitamin. Yeah, and I put in vitamins and flush um, red face, and it came up nice and it's called a niacin flush. Oh wow! So if you have a strong bit of amount of niacin, you get it in the face. Oh, have you had vitamins before though? Yeah, but if you have it on an empty stomach. Oh, see. So I was like, I was like one of the. Oompa Loompas. <laughs> I always thought vitamins were bad. Now I know. Yeah. Well, they, but them. these were special ones from the from – the, because I've been seeing in Europe, uh, a naturopath, get over it. I mean, it makes me slightly bit. It means I know stuff about being healthy. But, you know. When I went to see a naturopath, have I ever told you a story? She, got, she, went, she, got, she did all these tests. She goes through a list like this. So, kidneys – no, she goes like this. Okay, so how are your kidneys? I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. good. And she goes, um, what about your eyes? Your eyes feel good? I went, yeah, eyes. And she goes, all right, um, what about erections? Any problems with <laughs> erections? I'm like, no. She goes, so no problems with erec- erections? I go, no. She goes, well, so never, you've never had any problems with erections? I go, well, how far do you want to go back? <laughs> and then at the end, she did a list and she goes like this. Okay, so let's just go through it again. Your teeth, teeth are Okay. Yeah, 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 you know, your heart uh, erections with a, again with a question mark. <laughs> was she was she first year out or something? Because <laughs> no. I went to a chiropractor the other day. It was fantastic, and he goes, "You got a little, yeah, you know, you're coccyx." He's a magic doctor. Yeah, go on. And uh, he said, you, you're, 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 "You've been dropped on your coccyx when you're very young." Oh. And he said it affects the nerve systems through there. And he goes, "You have any erection problems?" <laughs> He's like, "Oh God, straight for that, straight for the." Uh, uh, hometown there. Oh God! Yeah. Um, anyway, so radiation not good. Cooling. What did they do? They tried to cool it with salt water, didn't they? Is that what they do? Didn't it already have a lot of salt water in there because of the tidal wave? But it doesn't obviously cool it in the radio. How many people died in. Is it, oh yeah. How many people, Sam, how many people died in? I think if, I think like a thousand or so. Oh, Sam, terrible. how many people died at Fukushima? One from radiation poisoning and 2,202 from the evacuation. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, okay, so it's not, I don't know. Oh, have you been to Japan? You're only saying that because you know you've been there. <laughs> we had the same discussion a couple of weeks ago. About Japan? Yes. You'd love Japan. You know why you'd love you'd- Japan? Because they're not in your face, so you go to like Morocco. You been to Morocco? <laughs> but anyway, you go to a place like that. You walk, yeah. You walk out. You leave your room. You say, Hello, my friend. How are you? You want rug? You want these? You want you know? Blah. They're in your face. There's about twenty of them. For, but you go to Japan. No one. They're very polite in Japan. They just leave you alone. They leave you alone. So you'd love it. And they speak English. And yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, maybe I'm more, I don't want to be left alone when I'm overseas. Maybe I want people to come up to me have a bit of <laughs> chat. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. Oh, they'll help you out. Yeah, that's but, a, but yeah, but they're polite to the point of my friend who lived there said, "We were asking someone directions, and, was, and she goes, I don't think they know. <laughs> they're just being polite. They're trying to help you, but they don't really know where you want to go. Hmm. So they're actually to the point of being really polite. So it's, all, it's polite first, helpful second. Yeah, and you know the other thing about it. I mean, I've been there about twenty years, but I thought it'd be all really advanced technology wise. It wasn't at all. It was like it was a bit old worldy. Japan It was well, interesting, you know. We did play on this show, me using a Japanese toilet when I was in Fiji. That's right. So you have had some Japanese experience. Yeah, a little bit of Japanese experience. But um, but they're well, very ordered too. So this thing happening to them would have just so freaked them out. that And must still. I mean, oh, yeah. are they up and running again? I would imagine that. I don't know. No. But I know contaminated stuff, you know, the water level and stuff like that, which is no good. And, you, and, there's, and how many years would it go on? No. It must go on for... Well, Chernobyl's still shut, so... Yeah. Can't go in there. Well, there's not a lot more we can say. All we can say is that Fukushima, not good. Can't go back there. No. Can't do anything with it. It's it's bad. We've Very seen bad. Right. So can we go on to sunflowers? Yeah, sunflowers. So I don't know what the connection is, but sunflowers, they're the big flowers, aren't they? What's, your, nice. favorite, what's your favourite flower? 
Oh, that's a carnations, blue ones. Um, carnations? No, I'm joking. Oh. <laughs> Think of Mark Holt. Remember Mark Holt used to hand out the carnations? <laughs> I want to make you my lady. Make you my lady. I wanna I'm a tulip you... guy. Oh, tulips are great. Yeah. I or like, I like tulips. What is it? French penny. What's a French penny? Oh. Um, is that a flower? French penny? Yeah, yeah, of course. The smell of it's the smell of Indonesia for mine. Oh wow! I'm yeah. trying to think. Yeah, what is my favourite flower? Mm. Yeah, what would you be? You'd be a. I don't know. Am I a native? My wife's got into natives now. Oh, natives are good. They yeah. mean they can die back, and they're still yeah, you get your money's worth. But street. a lot of flowers, you don't get your money if you get one of the, some of the if you, oh, if you buy them from a, like a petrol station. I reckon the last couple of days. Yeah. And the pedal, the, you get them home. Having said that, on occasion, I put them in a vase and then forgot to put water in and go, on, they're shit flowers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I you. like a tulip too. I love a tulip. You know, one of the mums at school was a florist and for a while, not anymore, she said, it was a really hard job because you have to get up early. It's cold. Yeah. Right. It's wet. And mm-hmm. you're dealing with also a lot of grief stricken people because there's a lot of funeral stuff going on with flowers. So people would say, why should I ride on the card? You know, all that kind of stuff. You know stuff. what we're going for lately? I'm doing mm. it over the phone. Oh, yeah. And I'm sending, because I had to go to a funeral the other day, and, and you send a box, so it's already set. Oh, yeah. And when you get those when you're having a bad time, it's great because you don't have to then pull them out and clip them. Yeah, and put them if in you the get them, If in the box, and there's water in the box, and they'll last for a couple of weeks just sitting there, you know, mm. on their merry way, not upsetting anybody. What about, just while we're on it, plastic flowers? Yeah, I don't like them. Have you seen the good ones though? No, oh, there are some very good ones. I know, I know. And they, but they collect uh, dust. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I see, don't my know. And my mum's nursing home. She often gets flowers, and by the time I get there, you can, they, they just look terrible. But a plastic flower, a glancing look at a plastic flower, you go, oh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. Did your mum appreciate flowers? My mum oh, still yeah. loves flowers. Yeah. 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 Flower shows. Look at what your brother got. Bigger than yours. Those ones. Did you yeah. say that? <laughs> Well, Trevor's in Queensland, so he has to overcompensate. So you, because I'm always there, I'm always there. Oh, so, right, so he's going big time. He goes big time with the flowers. Yeah. yeah. But um, I remember I, I used to get. I, my wife went through a stage where she loved fresh flowers, so I was always buying them. And this guy said, "Every time I see you, you're carrying flowers, mate. You must mm. be really bad at home yeah. or something." You can. You do recognise. You do know that when you're coming back. Mm. If it's not a birthday or a like a Valentine's Day. The but power of the flower, Kate Langbrook used to say, friend of the show. Power the power of, of the flower. flower. She used to what say. What about the single rose? It's always a bit yeah, no, that's in a creepy. Tube. That's creepy. <laughs> From a seven eleven with a teddy bear in it. Yeah, yeah. That's, not that's good. Batch, the Bachelor too. They do that, the single rose. So the bunch of roses it's hard to go past. Oh, I reckon. Bunch of tulips good. hard to go past. Tulips are very good. Uh, but the only thing is you do have to know what flowers mean. Like apparently oh. you don't give uh What's the ones? Tulip, not tulips. Yeah, tulip. Yeah. No, but no. Um, oh, there's one that you want to give when people die. Oh, are there? And there's one. Oh, what are they called? That if your cat, if it, you get it on your clothes, it'll never come out. Oh, and if your cat eats it, it's dead. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What is that? Yeah, what I is that? What it's mean. it's the pollen know. in the middle of the flower. That's right. Oh, what sort of flower is that? Sam, a lily. It's a lily. That's it. A Sam, will you relax? Okay, okay. What is it? It's a lily. <laughs> lilies are good. I like lilies. Lilies are great. Like yeah. you, you know, I like the Dame Edna ones. I like Lady Ola's, actually. I was in the audience. That's interesting. I was in the audience the, the night she was, Dame Edna, was fly, throwing the gladi, gladiolos out, mm-hmm. and she threw one, and it stalked someone right in the eye to the point of them bleeding, and they ran out of the ran out of the theatre, and I think there was like a... Court case. A settlement. The, yeah. Wow. But, it, but imagine being hit in the face by a stalk. Yeah, that's no good. No. She's pretty good, isn't she, Dame Edna? Fantastic. She's coming back again. Oh, that when when I mean I saw him, and uh, so Les is good, and I like Sandy Stone, but Dame Edna, unbelievable. Dame Edna, just on on her day. <laughs> oh my God, um, here's something interesting. Mm. Who was an artist that specialised in painting? Oh, I've just been to Europe. Uh, I, I'm gonna. <laughs> I want to go back on the tape and see how many times you've Brent mentioned he's been to Europe. Mon- Monet, you talking about Monet? Van Gogh. F- oh, Van Gogh and the yeah, the flowers. Yeah, I don't yeah, say yeah. like you knew because you didn't go for it. <laughs> but Monet was anyway. Monet did about? Monet did water lilies. Oh, no, you did lilies. But Van Gogh did yeah. sunflowers. That's he right. did a whole oh, series. Oh, yeah, of course of, he did. Whole series of sunflowers. How many paintings did Van Gogh sell when he was alive? He was. I don't think he was one. Dead. I think it's one. 
He wasn't big in his time. His brother was his agent, did a terrible job. <laughs> Never get your family involved. Picasso was big in his time, though, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was big in but his Van time. But Van Gogh was, a, was, a, was like banging oh, no, it he out. He was depressed knowing. and everything. Yeah, it was terrible. But um, you, you've got your books out. You've yeah. got your six books out <laughs> in your own time. Parenthood. At your at all, are you doing at your any, service station? Are you doing any signings or anything? I don't know. That's a good question. I, don't, I actually don't know. That's a good question. I should find out. Um, okay, F- moments in TV or movies where flowers have played a big part. Oh, that's a very good question. Anything in anything in anything I can think of? Anything graves or? Mm, mm. There's a scene in. Curb Your Enthusiasm, we do tend to play a bit of that. Oh, fantastic. Do you know the scene I'm talking about? Yeah, where he steals the flowers off, <laughs> off um, Funk House's He mothers. goes to the flower shop and they won't change it, 50 or 100 or something. Yeah. So then he, Funk House's sister had died yeah, or something. Yeah, it was a sister. memorial. And the memorial was in the middle of the street. Middle of the road. And then he... Um, he steals the flowers. He steals the flowers. <laughs> and then... Maybe we could play that for um, yeah. Think we should music play some of that for Think Music. Well, we should have some Think Music because I think we've we've hit the time frame here. Hang on, but have you headed towards anything? I've I've got a little something. Oh, no, but anyway, I can make something up. I've just been passed a note, and this topic comes from Tony yep. at my gym. Oh, good on you, Tony. Well oh, done, good on you, Tony. Is this the over fifties gym? Yes, you wow. say it like it's a bit creepy. <laughs> As soon as you Love say as as over fifty, like, like the over twenty eight, nice spot, isn't it? Yeah, yeah 50 over, gym. over fifty. It doesn't pay any. I mean, it's great. I love it. Could I you join day. if you were forty nine? Will they let you in? Oh, I said that to him. I said, "What's the cut off?" It's like you know, do you have to get your birth certificate out? Like over, you know, like when you go to the pub when you're a kid. Yeah, uh, and they they trick you. They go, "What year were you born?" Yeah, you have yeah. to quickly do the math in your head because you're only fifteen. What star sign are you? Yeah, and uh, having said that. Security guys aren't that great at doing math either. No. So. <laughs> so, so what are we talking about? Can no. you be forty nine and join this gym? What I think, I think yeah, we'd have to be able to. Yeah, really, especially if you look it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> especially. You can't be like some young footballer in there making everyone feel bad, like no. some really fit dude. No, but if you're some guy who's puffing and wheezing at forty eight, tell what, there's some big boys in there who are over fifty and they're pulling some big weights. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you spot them? Good or spot you? Yeah. You know, you want me to speak with that? Yeah. Well, let's let's um let's hear let's hear curb uh, curb Larry David because Funk has passed away. Yeah, hey, very Bob funny Einstein. Man. Oh, very, very funny. He man. was he was Super Dave. Yeah, the I original. Know. I love yeah, Super the Dave. Best. I got a good sense of smell. What are you doing? Where are you going? There they are. I knew it. Hi, Marty. Hi. How are you, Cheryl? Boy, those are beautiful. Thank you. Where'd you get them? Larry just brought him home for me. Where'd you get the flowers? Um, where'd I get those? Oh, Ventura Boulevard. What store? What was it? Uh, where can I find a vase? Did you take the flowers at my mother's site? What? What? They wouldn't take the 50 at the flower store. How could you do that? Why? There's so yeah. many of them. I didn't know it was such so a big... So many of them? Is that such They're a bad not there thing? to pick? Oh, my you God. Are the I should have that, LD. I should have that. That's just I have really. never That's heard anything like that. Oh, How many flowers does she need? You took what? flowers from Marty's oh, mother? Is that a graveyard? Well, not a graveyard. It's a roadside memorial. It's not such a... Come on. How could you do this? And you know what? I am missing one. Where's the third bunch? There uh, were three bouquets. Uh, uh, I know where it is. He will get you that bouquet. I feel sorry for you. If you weren't my best friend, I would take my bare hands and pop your head off your neck. Oh. All right, so have you, oh, I love that's one of my favorite shows. It is of all time. Is it, is it your enthusiasm. favorite show because you identify with his yeah um, sense of having to lie his way? I just of? like the yeah, but I just like the funny things he gets into, and it, it's the sort of thing that. What happened to one of us, but he just takes it. He always says in real life, he says, I would never do that stuff, but I think about doing it. Yeah, it's what I would be if I if I answered the, used the voice. So when the head. parking guy says, oh, that's, you know, you've kicked over into the second hour, that's $40. Mm. You're mm. like, oh, no, you know, like then you argue. It's Occasionally like, uh, you slip into it, don't you? Where yeah, you yeah. Do you want to uh, come and have a look at my new house? Mm, not really. 
I get yeah, it. Yeah, bedrooms. no, the tour. The tour. The tour. I know. Yeah. I say it, I say it yeah. to friends yeah. of mine. No, as Larry David said, no, I know. I get it. I, I get, get it. Bathrooms? 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 Yeah, yeah, I get, I get it. it. No, no big deal. I get it. <laughs> and <laughs> vanilla. When my kids asked for a taste of vanilla, you know, that was one of my favourites. When he's stuck behind the woman asking to taste vanilla. And they're, come on, vanilla. It's going to taste like vanilla. Uh, All right. So we should. Have you got an answer? I don't have an answer. I reckon that sunflowers hmm. are probably the only thing. That can grow where there's been radiation. Oh wow, that's amazing! Which I don't know is is a sunflower a does it cre- does it create an oil or anything or does it oh, is it sun- a pro- yeah. is it a is it something that you can use uh, industrialistically? There is sunflower oil, sunflower oil. So therefore, it might be it's the only thing that can grow in the middle of radi- when a radiation uh, explosion has happened, a nuclear Fukushima. meltdown. Oh. Has what do you got? I'm going to say sunflowers are the new industry of Fukushima. So they've 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 stepped away from nuclear power. So similar to me in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've mine's, stepped away. They've stepped away and they've gone. We're going to grow sunflowers from now on. So that's what saved. Wonder how they knew though. Wonder how they found that out. Oh, if that is the case, well, maybe well, if that, that is the answer, and I reckon we're pretty close. If that is the answer. Then, oh, no. um, well, Tony at your gym knows the answer. He's still busy lifting weights and riding a bike that goes nowhere. Yeah, so. He, yeah, they're big on the rowing machine at the moment. Oh, the rowing machine. I, and I do oh, the I same joke the as I walk machine. past every time. What are you training for? The Commonwealth Games, the Olympics? What are you doing? 1,200? <laughs> Was it cockless? Oh, I should yeah, have a cockless, cockless joke. yeah. I'll ride, I'll ride like inside you on the bike with a figure going, stroke, stroke. <laughs> oh, I've got to say, that's two more I can do. I can do stroke and I can do cockless. Stroke, so that's good. stroke. <laughs> oh, look. oh, it's one of the awesome foursome. That's always a good one. <laughs> Didn't they do an ad for um, yeah. sun, uh, uh, sun fruit? Something? Yes. And yes. they had to sing a really the bad jingle? They were bouncing around. Oh, bad idea. I know. Okay, do we All need right. to get the answer? Let's, what is the answer, Sam? In March 2011, the Fukushima nuclear power plant suffered a series of coal meltdowns and explosions after the massive earthquake and tsunami that hit the Japanese coast. Millions of sunflowers have been planted in radioactive areas to soak up toxins from the ground and brighten the hillsides of Fukushima. More information in the show notes. There you go, not bad. You were right. Yeah, you're well, right. you'd have to sort of put two and two together with that one. Not Tony, not Tony. That was a good idea. Don't worry, it's good ideas. Um, thanks, Tony. Thanks, thanks, Tony. You have been listening to Somehow Related with Glenn Robbins and Dave O'Neill. We appreciate all suggestions. We do get because we give Sam a break. Yeah. So she gets up Monday morning at four AM. She goes, Oh, this is some Tony's given me one. So Sorry? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Tony. Well he's probably quite fit looking, Tony. <laughs> Tony's probably doing all right for his age, but yeah, I don't think I, I think I reckon Sam's probably a bit a bit of out of his a bit younger for, Oh, okay, yeah. Well, how, old, how, how old how old how old I thought Sam would be in her forties. Sam, how old are you? Not something that's relevant for the professional environment. Oh, oh, okay. That's All interesting. Right. I wouldn't have. Uh... There you go. <laughs> Fair enough. She's got a privacy. <laughs> got it. Yes. Mind your own business. That's oh, appropriate. Boy. Um, uh, so, sunflowers, Fukushima. So, what you're saying is, because you've got a political bent, mm. if you're in power now, because you will go into politics. We all know that. You'll eventually go into politics. No, probably not. You, you, your wife doesn't want you to. Does no, she? that's right. Yeah. If it came up and you had to make a speech, mm. and let's just say, what do you want to be, federal? Say it. I reckon federal. You want to go? Would you make you senator, lower house? I reckon senator. Ah, so you make it? Would you? Don't, don't you much. have to make a, a, a the debut yeah, speech? Yeah, make a main speech. Yeah. Would you mention nuclear power in your debut speech? Oh yeah, maybe. What would you say? Maybe I'd say. Um, Listen well, up, folks. Thanks for having me in the Senate to follow such prestigious people as Pauline Hanson, Darren Hinch, and Jackie Lamy. <laughs> People ask how I got elected. Well, have a look. Have a look at these people sitting around here. I'll probably just be yeah, slamming yeah, people, yeah, yeah. you know, slamming yeah. people. Nuclear power is something that we should look at. All right. Oh, but you say you'd go for it. Oh, I don't know. If I, I don't know if nuclear power would be one of my policies. I'd be more wind and solar. Yeah. What about wave? They talk about wave power too. They have yeah. wave power around the world. Why not? Why not get into the tides, you know? Yeah. Or geothermal. Geothermal, get it off the earth. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We haven't even looked at that. I mean, hey, wouldn't you love, would you love to 
I mean, everyone talks out. about going into space, don't they? Yeah. Wouldn't you love to go into the Earth? Oh, that's interesting. Don't you reckon? Oh, you should be jotting that down. I reckon that would be just... Because, so here's, here's your theory, right? Rather than going out... Go, go so in. it's like so it's like in the journey of life, Yeah, you, you, you do a lot of stuff, but it's not until later in life that you make the inward journey. Oh. So it's a metaphor for what you should be doing psychologically. Oh. So what? So have you ever been down a mine? Okay, Ballarat, uh, we're in... Yeah, in, Ballarat, Sovereign Hill, yep. Uh, you auditioned for... The Beaconsfield Mining Disaster. <laughs> so you're highly qualified <laughs> yep. to go down under. And, and what do you think Hill? would be interesting in going down? Well, I, I, there's probably another world down there with dragons. <laughs> 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 I just reckon it'd be interesting because it gets hotter and hotter as you go further down. Yeah, well, that's what that's what miners say. Geo, and it also hang on, does it get cooler at oh, first? Yeah. I think it first gets cooler and then it gets really hot. Yeah, right. Oh, let's have a look. What's down there? Don't you reckon? Isn't there meant to be fire in the core of the Earth? Isn't there meant to be some sort of fire or something going on yeah. down there? That's, that's, where the, that's where the big magnet is. That's the big gravity. Magnet. That's where the big magnet is. <laughs> that's where you want to go now with your fridge magnets. <laughs> Do we reckon they, we, we, you could? I mean, we're couldn't, doing. Couldn't you? Be, couldn't you uh, theoretically <laughs> drill a hole? I was just about from to say here that. to China. Well, they've often said that. And then put a train down. Wouldn't it be good to get Who a train? Who did that stand-up routine about the kid that was in his backyard? And he was he was trying to dig through to China, and then he'd go home, and and while he was at home, they'd throw a few, few um spring rolls and stuff <laughs> in the hole. <laughs> in the hole. When he came back here, yeah. whoa, you're getting close. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's some chopsticks. Wow, that's incredible. Um, uh, but yeah, well, how, how well are we making tunnels now? Hasn't Elon Musk done a, a new digging machine? Yeah, has he? I think he has. Oh, so on. he could go right through to the other side. And, because that's, I mean, you can drive from London to Paris. No, train. Yeah, train. I caught it the other day. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's great. How long? Oh, you're only there. underwater for not very long. 40 minutes, maybe. It's amazing. What do you mean you're underwater? Well, you go under the channel. The train goes under the channel. Do you do anything special? Do you just sit there? No, you just sit there. Do they tell you that we're underwater now? Is yeah. it like when you're in a plane, they go, if you look out to the left, you can see Ezra Rock? Well, that's... <laughs> <laughs> no, you see, you're going through Calais, and then you, and then they say, they actually, I think they announced it, but also kids can get, um, you can get buy 3D goggles and put it on, and there's all, you know, planet, um, octopus and stuff out the window. And oh, stuff. that's good. But there, there is nothing, really. You're, you're in a tunnel. And then, and then when you reach the other end, do they announce in English or French? Ah, uh, they do both. And can you speak a little bit of French? No, no, no. Of course no, you can. No, Come on. No, no, no. Had, Parlez-vous you, Francais? Yeah, that, that's – here you no, go. Yeah. yeah. No, that's do you speak English? Do you speak English? Pour, oh, yeah, okay. No, do you speak French? Parlez-vous Anglais? Hmm. Um, oh. Salut, ça va. Yeah, it's boring. We should go. <laughs> <laughs> Interested in new books? Subscribe to Chapter One. Chapter One is a new podcast with me, Melly Thomas. Each episode, you'll hear the first chapter of a new release book from top publishers. Subscribe and listen to Chapter One, a new podcast with me, Melly Thomas. Search for Chapter One where you're listening now.